Airbags are just fun. And they're not a lot of time and trouble to install. Today I'm here at Brothers Tech Center to show you how to install all of this into Tony's 1968 Chevy pickup. Now it's going to be basically about the same from about mm, 63 all the way up to about 87. So you better stay tuned if you want to have some fun with your truck. And we're looking at everything that's going to be coming with your kit. We've got the instructions and all the plates, the fittings, etc., etc. Only thing we're not going to have is the wiring. I'll show you how much and what to get and how to install that a little bit later. But I want to show you a few different things here. We got our airbags, our tank, our brackets. We're even getting nuts and bolts with stuff. We're getting our fittings. These are quarter inch lines right here. Um, you can see we're getting a Vi Air. Uh, pump right here very popular pump for airbags we're getting a shock relocator kit because when we bring it down we're going to have to take that shock from a excessive lean and get it back up to a more uh, acceptable level all of that will be showing you here in just a second let me start tearing this thing apart so we've got to be safe we're in park we've got our emergency brake on we're on flat ground we've got chucks on our back tires and i'm going to be jacking this up underneath the front of the cross member getting the whole front end up at the same time i'll be getting um some jack stands and putting them underneath the frame because i have to have the lower control arm to be able to go up and down so let me get this up and safe and i'll be right back this right here this is the plate that's going to be holding onto the airbags in the front right here it's going to be bolted onto your cross member right here and in order to get to that we're obviously going to have to take some stuff out of the way First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shock off, then I'll take my caliper off and set it over here to the side. Then I'll go ahead and take my tie rod end and set it off to the side. That'll give me um, really good access to my upper and lower control arm. Ball joint nuts there. I'll get this out of the way and then we'll see about getting into here. So what you're going to want to do is when your nuts and bolts come off, go ahead and get them together and bolt them back up. This way it's going to be easier to find everything when it's going back together. Now the caliper here, technically speaking, I could unbolt this, but then I'd have to bleed the brakes after and I don't want to do that. I want to save time and I want to save time for you too. So when we take this caliper off, what we're going to do is simply have a box that's close by that I can set it on. The main thing is that we don't want any tension on this rubber hose here. If you let it hang and drag, then more than likely it's going to crack and you're going to have problems. You're going to have to replace it. So make sure that that hose stays protected. Now on the tie rod end, there is a little cotter pin. Looks something like this. So you'll need to bend that straight and take it out of the castle nut down here. Once we've got that off, this will come off. Okay, now once I get this off, I'm actually gonna put it back on again. And I'm gonna screw it down just by hand until the end of the nut is even with the threads, okay? And the reason that I'm doing that is I'm going to use this right here. This is a tie rod end popper right here. This is a lot better than the old style pickle forks that you would see go in there and then you hammer them until it pops off. Those there, a lot of times they'll damage the rubber bag that you have in here. So this is a lot nicer way to go. And the reason that we're going to take our nut and put it right on the edge of the uh, bolt down here is because if this slips or something, it can damage the threads. But as long as the nut's on there, we won't have any problems more than likely. So all I got to do is just put this on just like this. I'm making sure that the point down here is getting right in the center of the nut and then I've got good meat right up on here and then I'll just simply tighten this up until it pops on off off there. Okay, so you hear that pop there? So you know that that popped. Now I can take the nut off the rest of the way. And I can swing the whole tie rod end 
out of my way. I'm going to put my nut back on. This has fine threads on it here. If it bangs up against stuff, a lot of times they will get ruined. So you put your nut back on, you'll be able to find it, and you'll be able to protect your threads. Your upper and lower um, ball joints, they're basically just the same thing. We're going to take the cotter pin out, we're going to take the bolt off, we're going to get it all the way even with the end of the bolt, and then we'll go ahead and take these off just like we did the tie rod ends. These are just a little bit bigger. Now, a side note here, this is semi potentially dangerous. You do have to watch your fingers and stuff. If you were to take these bolts off all the way and leave them off and then you popped it, it'll just come springing apart. And we're lucky this only this has drop springs in it, so it's not under a lot of tension. But if this had the um, stock springs in it, there'd be a lot of tension in there. And when this popped, it'd just come popping and exploding apart and take out fingers and stuff. So make sure you have those nuts on there. Now, in the times in the past when I did this, I would normally just take the whole entire spindle out of there. But I'm going to try to save some time and just disconnect the top and let the, um, the spindle just fall forward and see if I've got enough room. Maybe that'll save us some time. Let's see how well that works out for us. Now, we've got the jack up underneath here. You have to have that to keep the tension of the spring. I'm going to let it down slowly, and then the spring's going to pop out of there, fall out of there. Again, this is a lowered spring. We don't have that much tension. We don't have to worry that much, but if th this was stock, then when this came down all the way, this spring wouldn't just fall out like that. It'd jam up in there. It might come shooting out, so you gotta be careful of that. Another thing I wanna mention, you're already in this deep. Make sure before you get in this deep that you've checked out your ball joints uh, and your bushings and everything like that. You don't want to tear all this apart and then tear it all apart again. So get all your ducks lined up, knock out all your birds at one time. This does look like this is going to come down far enough, so I think that I'm going to be able to go ahead and put this plate in there without too much trouble. I want you to notice on this plate that it has this notch right here. Now that notch is lining up with the side that the brake line is on. So you're going to take this guy and set it on up in there. And you're going to get it placed in and get it nice and even and looking good. Um, it's a little bit smaller than the bracket here, the upper con the cross member. So I'm going to set it uh, right about like this right here. And then I'm going to mark a hole and I'm going to drill it. Okay, now you might think to yourself, oh, I'm going to mark all the holes and I'm going to drill all the holes. The only problem with that is that the chances of all the holes lining up is pretty much nil. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drill one hole, we're going to bolt the bracket back on, and then we're going to go ahead and drill the rest of the holes. When we're drilling the holes, what we're going to do is we're going to use a really small drill bit like this, and we're going to get a pilot hole going. Because a lot of times when you're using the f big fat ones, they'll move around on you a, a, a bit too much. So get a pilot hole going first, and make sure you got your safety glasses. So we've got a bag labeled bag mounting hardware right for you. And this is going to have not only the bolts and the lock washers, but it's going to have regular washers on there too. So we're going to assemble all these pieces next. But before I do, I want to go over airbags a little bit. I want to show you this one right here. Now what they do on these is it's just a plate right here. Then they glue it up and they put this clamp on it right here. The problem with these is that they uh, do tend to leak over time. Now take a look at this bag right here, and you'll notice it's bigger, badder, and beefier. I want you to know how it clamps on the top and bottom right here. It just gets crushed down on there. So these last longer. These are the bags that come with your kit. We don't use this style. Now what we're going to do here is, we, when we put this plate on, we have to make sure this large hole is above this large hole and we've got to make sure that this notch right here is going the correct way. So if I went like that, that would be wrong because this notch has to line up with our brake line here. So I'll go ahead and put this on. We're going to go with a washer, lock washer, and then the bolt. Washer, lock washer, bolt. 
Now, sometimes when people put these together, they will use a um, thread sealant on here. And um, I suppose that's all right if you like that and all. But um, thread sealing tape will work and solve all your leak problems. The problem that most people run into is they don't use enough of it on there and uh, they might put it on the wrong way. So what happens is, is you kind of want to think about putting this on and screwing it on. Okay, so we're going to put this on like this and then we're going to turn it just like we would be bolting it into something. And we're going to go around, oh, one second here. We're going to go around once, twice, three times, four times, and even five times just to be on the extra safe side. I'll get that down there like that. Now if you put the tape on the wrong way, when you screw it down, it'll kind of unravel. So that's why you have to do it like this. And when I'm tightening this down, even though it is a large bolt, I'm not um, going to be torquing this down to 85 pounds or anything like that. I just have to have it tight. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. This is the little fitting that's going to go right in here. Now this kit comes with quarter inch lines. Quarter inch line will let you go up nice and slow, come down nice and slow. If you go with three eighths or all the way up to half inch, then you'll come up and down faster, but um, that sometimes is a bit too much. When it comes down, it hammers and things like that. So the quarter inch line is gonna give you a little bit more control, but we have this um, to where if you wanna go with different controls and larger lines in the future, you can can. So we got our five turns on this. We'll go ahead and put it in. I'll get a 9 16 wrench. Can you hand me a 9 16 wrench over there, please. Cool. And I'm also tightening this down and not crushing it either. If you tighten it down too much, sometimes you can actually cause your leak. Now this right here is where the hose is going to be connecting. If it's facing this way, it's going to be tougher to get your hands on it and uh, connect the line. So I'm going to take this and face it towards the back right here. And now I can go ahead and bolt this in, but uh, uh, we got to do the bottom piece right here. This is going to fit right in that perch there. So this is going to be the same ball game as far as washer, lock washer, and then bolt. You're going to have two of them in there. It actually has three, but you only need two on the outside. Three is a bit overkill. When I sit this in here, I want you to notice this plate right here. This was where the bump stop went to keep your car from bottoming out all the way. And if you leave this in here, it's gonna rub on the bags. If it rubs on the bags, it will make them leak. So we're gonna to have to cut this guy out. Now, if I had my spindle off and stuff, it'd be a little bit easier, but leaving it all in here make it a little more difficult. It's not that big of a deal. I'll cut it on both sides as much as I can. I'll cut a section of this out right here, and then I'll cut it a little bit more. But for the last of it, um, you'll either have to get a sawzall or you'll just have to take this and bend it back and forth until it breaks off. Also, you could go ahead and drill out um, just through the top piece of this metal piece right here where it is uh, welded in and take the whole thing off but normally I like to cut it off and then drill them and make it a little bit nicer but uh, we have time constraints today so I'm gonna cut this out and we're gonna get on about it All you gotta do is just cut enough of the metal away and then the last piece you'll just have to rock and back forth until it pops off of there. 
Now, you don't absolutely have to do that, but I've seen things that rub on bags just the slightest and cause the bag trouble. So I really like to take that out of there. I don't have to worry about it at all. Now I can go ahead and get this guy and get it up in there. I'm making sure that this fitting is ported towards the inside. And then I'm gonna take this and get it in the lower pocket right here. I've got somebody on the um, jack right here and they're gonna go ahead and jack it up for me. And then I'll wait till my plate gets about even right here. And I don't wanna jack it up too much because I'm gonna have to move this around a little bit and line up the holes some. So uh, if it's jacked up too high, then it's gonna make it more difficult. So I'll do that real quick. Now this right here does not have any washers. It just has the uh, bolt and the lock washer in the nut. And when I stick these on, I'm just gonna get them in loosely and on a couple of turns so that I can line up the rest of my holes. If I were to take one and bolt it down, then I wouldn't be able to move my bracket around and uh, line up my holes as well. All right, just give me a minute for this and I'll be right back. So now I can go ahead and button this all back up. I'll simply jack the uh, lower control arm up until I can get my upper control arm to match up. And then I'll get my bolt on there. Make sure that you get your cotter pin. You should also torque these down. I forget off of the top of my head what it torques down to. It'll vary from year to year on a couple of different things. So probably look it up, that's good, for your specific year and uh, make sure it's torqued. So I'm going to run my air lines now, but when you do your air lines and you're going to cut them, don't use dikes. It'll mess them all up. You get the sharpest razor that you have, and then you just nice and even, as straight as absolutely possible, you cut the hose nice and perfect. If you got this off, then you can have a leak on your fitting. Nice and flat. Uh, you got a lot of different ways you could do this and hide it. You can get creative on it. What I'm going to do is kind of get things nice and simple and just simply drill a hole right here. Then I'll bring my airline up and come in between my frame and my inner fender and then it'll go up to the dash right there. When you do something like that, you cannot have this go through metal and jag on it. It will cut and it will leak. You have to get a little rubber grommet like this and uh, put it in the hole you drill and this way you're not going to have this rub and you're not going to have it leak. Got everything all buttoned up. I got my shock on there that comes with the kit. You want to notice that it has a little sticker right here on which way to go up. They do mount a specific way. Double check everything. Make sure that it is torqued correctly. Make sure you have a cotter pin in there and double check things that you didn't even work on. All of the other peripheral bolts, idler arm, etc., etc. Make sure that everything's copacetic before you button it up. Then we're going to get on the rear airbags and I'll show you how to install your lines, your pump, your tank, etc, etc, and wire it all up too. Once again, we're on flat ground. We've got tire chucks up on the front. We're sure where this isn't going to move anywhere. I've jacked up the truck enough to get um, jack stands on the flat part of the frame right up here. And now we're going to go ahead and take out our spring and our shocks. I'll go ahead and take the shock off first and then the spring. It's very important that you have a jack underneath the rear end. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply jack up the rear end and take, until I take a little bit of the um, stress or the tension off of the spring. I don't want it hanging down uh, because then when I undo the spring, it'll fall. I don't want it up too high because then I won't be able to pull the spring out. So we just get it up and then we're going to be able to take all this off nice and safely. Let me get that done and I'll show you how to install the bags in the back. Okay, spring comes out nice and easy like that. You just have this bolt and bracket kind of thing at the bottom here. No big deal, you got a bolt, same thing at the top. Comes out nice and easy. Just make sure you have your jack underneath your rear end, loosen them up, and then uh, go ahead and bring it down a little bit. Your spring will come out nice and easy like that. Keep the jack under that rear end. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to assemble the bags and install it. All right, again, I am going to get ample amounts of uh, this pipe tape right here. Again, I'm going around five times. I'm not pulling it really hard or anything like that. 
I'm just getting it get on there nice and firm, but I'm not pulling it so that it's all skinny. Once I know I've got at least five turns on there, I'm going to go ahead and get it in my bag here in the top. And we're tightening this down. We're not getting crazy. I realize it's a large nut and you might be encouraged to really crank it because you think it's that big but we're just getting this in really nice and firm but nothing crazy we've got our fitting here same thing on the teflon tape and five okay this also we're going to be putting in firmly but we're not going to over crank it Okay. This is the cup that goes on top. That is going to simply sit right on here like that. You'll notice this notch right here, and that notch is so you can get your airline fitting right in there. So make sure you're not mounting it up any other way. I don't even think you can, but again, we've got washer, lock washer, and then bolt. Now, in this bag right here, you'll see the large nut washer and bolt that is cut to a specific length. We're gonna get this guy out of here. And this doesn't have a way where you can um, get a lock washer on it. So we're gonna put some thread lock on this and then that should help us keep it from coming back out. Make sure this is screwed all the way down. And then this is going to tuck up right into there. When it tucks up into there, you'll put this washer on top and then the nut. We'll get a lock nut for that too. This plate right here, this is going to go on the bottom right here. And it's just so that the airbag has a nice firm plate to sit on right like that. Now I want to install this. I want to make sure that this airline is pointing in a direction that I want. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to be running my airlines up into my frame rails here. So I'm going to have this guy pointed just a bit to the inside so that it'll just all go up nice and neat and hidden and everything. So just give me a minute to get this all set up and then we'll see what comes next. Okay, so you're going to notice on this plate that it has three holes, but you're only going to use the center one. It's going to just slide underneath your airbag right here, and then you're going to go ahead and get this bolt that's in the kit, large washer, lock washer, and we're going to go right up from the bottom here. Now, I like to get my top bolt in first, but I'm not going to bolt it up all the way because I need some movement so that I can uh, get all this lined up. And if it was bolted in, it'd be too much pressure and I wouldn't be able to move it around enough. So now I'm going to go ahead and install our lowered shocks that come with the kit. Also comes with a shock relocator kit that I mentioned earlier in the video. Now I'm not going to go ahead and install this because it's already in the truck. If you go right here, you'll be able to see the link and watch that video too. But in essence, it just, this plate goes on the bottom, this plate goes up and top. And what it's gonna do for you is when you lower the truck, what's happening is your shock isn't sitting up like this anymore. It's sitting like this, and it's basically not even working. So the shock relocator kit is gonna get in a proper operating position for you. So I'm gonna get this in, and then we'll see what I'm gonna do next. Now this right here, this is a track arm bar. Some people call it a pan hard bar. This does not come with a kit. I repeat, does not come with a kit, but I highly recommend it. This car's already been lowered, so it doesn't need it. But if it was original, the original pan hard bar is longer. And when you lower the truck, you're gonna need a shorter one of these. So it bolts onto the frame and it bolts onto the rear end and it just keeps it from moving side to side. But when you lower it, it'll go over to the one side more. This is gonna get you back in center. Okay, you can put the, uh, 
air pump and the air tank a lot of different places all the way in the back in the engine compartment all kinds of different stuff so you can get creative with that and put it where you want I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the cab to keep it nice and clean and everything like that when we're installing our tank right here this has some rubber isolators right here and some nuts and bolts that come with it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this little brass uh, spacer right here because if it's in there you're not gonna be able to get this little rubber um, isolator grommet inside of the holes on the bottom of the bracket here. So this is going to go in here like this. Get yourself something soft like this. Don't use anything harsh like a, a screwdriver. And all you kind of do is get one um, spot started and then you just kind of got to get it walking in and uh, work it around the edge. Okay, so before you install your tank, you're going to go ahead and you're going to install a few of these fittings. Now this guy right here, this is a petcock and what it's going to do is it's going to go in the very bottom there and then what will happen is that the pump will draw moisture out of the air and it will collect in the tank. So periodically you're going to have to open this up and let any water out of there. Of course we're going to be using our tape and everything like that. You've got a fitting like this. Now this fitting right here is going to take a quarter inch line and it's going to go to your um, air controls. And so you've got uh, obviously a lot of different fittings to choose from. So go ahead and figure out what's going to work best for all your routing, fit all these guys in, and then whatever you don't use, we've got block off plates to take care of that. So now let's talk about our air lines. I'm going to show you how to connect and disconnect the air lines. These are just push on lock. All you got to do is just push it right on in and you're set. Now if you need to take it off, all you got to do is this ring on the outside, you press that in uh, and then you can pull this back out. If you were to just simply press it in and try to pull it out, it won't happen. You have to pull that down in order to get this out. Now I've left all this really long so that I can show you how it hooks up. I'll go back later and clean it all up. One other thing I like to do is I like to label all of my lines, left rear, right rear, my feed, etc. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hook it into our controls right here. I want to note also that this has a uh, connector right here. One's going to be for the ground, one's going to be for power. That would be, you know, ignition power also. And then this will light up. That's awful nice. This here is just your up and down paddles. Okay. And on the back here, so what you're going to see is you got one going here into the control and one going to the paddle. You got one right here going into the gauge and into the paddle and then you got this one down here on the bottom and it's going into both of the paddles down at the bottom. That is going to be your feed line. Okay, so that is the line that is coming from your compressor in your um, tank. These right here, you just decide which side you want to be uh, front and which side you want to be back. You'll get a small uh, hose like this and then you'll simply plug them in. And then these are the T's right here. So here's the left and the right front. And the T's and these lines right here, you want to have them the same length. If you did some sort of weird routing and this one's 10 feet long and this one's 6 feet long, sometimes the shorter one's going to fill up faster and you're going to be a little weird when you're coming up. So try to have them both be the same length and then you'll have a little bit uh, more uh, better looking ups and downs. So all these guys are just going to simply connect like this. And then what I'm going to do with this when I'm all done is I'm going to hook it up right up underneath here. I know a lot of times too, sometimes people they think, well, man, I want to have all everything really tight and, you know, but you want to have extra length on these hoses. It just happens to be a thing that occasionally you're going to have to cut a hose and then you're going to have to reconnect them. Uh, maybe you're upgrading the system or something like that. So give yourself a little bit of forgiveness room and then just simply zip tie everything up. Now we're going to go ahead and start the electrical. Anytime you're doing electrical, you're hooking something up to the battery, you always have to have a fuse as close to the battery as possible. If you don't and the wire um, arcs out onto a negative, it's going to fry and burn the entire truck down. So you always have to have a fuse on there. Now this is a bit 
big and beefy. This is a 40 amp fuse right here. You do want to go with a 40 amp fuse. You don't necessarily have to go this thick of wire right here. You can go with um, a, a, an eight gauge wire. I went with six gauge because I thought I was going to run it all the way to the back. The farther the wire goes, the fatter it needs to be. Um, so you can go a little bit thinner if you need to. So after I get everything attached, I'll go ahead and hook this up to the battery and then we'll test our pump. Let me show you what we're doing on the electrical on the pump. Now the instructions come with detailed um, electrical diagram, but I'm going to give you a quick little rundown of what's going on. So we've got our 40 amp fuse that's hooked up right to the battery, and I've got it running down my right side here, and it's hooked up to my relay on the um, 30 connection that'll be referenced in this right here. The opposite side of that, where the power's coming out of, if you will, is the 87 connection, and it is our power source right here to the pump. Now you're going to have two grounds on this. One's going to be going to the relay, and it is hooked on to 85, and then you've got one that is hooked on here down to the um, cab. This has to be very clean, has to be bolted down. Grounds are your number one electric problem. Now this right here, I've got one wire here, and this is going to my fuse block right there, and it is giving me power only when the key is on. When the key's on, this is getting power to my pressure switch, and then this wire right here is going to my relay, and that's actually what's turning it on. When the pressure is low, the sensor uh, realizes that, and it turns on the pump. Once the pressure gets to a certain point, it'll turn it off. So here we can test it. And we're going good. So I'll go ahead and I'll neaten all this stuff up later. Zip tie my wires and get electrical wrap on them and things like that. But you're basically done right now. Let me go ahead and just get out of here, throw the wheel tires on. And let's go up and down, baby. So this took a little bit longer than I wanted it to because we ran into some rusty nuts and things like that. More than likely you will too. It'll probably take you somewhere around six to ten hours. Main thing is to take your time, have patience with it, double check all your nuts and bolts, your cotter pins. Make sure that when you're running your wiring and your airbag lines you're staying away from anything sharp or anything hot. You're going to be just fine. Another reason I really like this uh, airbag system right here, this kit that we've got, is it's a good entry level way to get into airbags, but it's very expandable. This just has quarter inch lines. It goes up and down a little bit slow, but you can go all the way to three eighths or half inch lines, depending on how fast up you can go. You can add pumps, you can add a larger um, tank. They've got all kinds of crazy controls. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do to expand this kit. We've started off with quality airbags and quality brackets so you can build everything on top of that. Now one thing else I want to add is you can see that we've got this nice rack behind us. And yes, I could have done all of this work on that rack, but more than likely you don't have one. So I'm down on the ground like a dog every single week showing you how to put your truck back on the road. I'm going to be very disappointed if you don't subscribe to the channel, check out our Instagram and our uh, what Facebook because next week I'm going to be down on the ground again and you better be there because we're going to get your truck back on the road come hell or high water.